Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Obra Potato, and this is my top strategy games of 2016. Now, in order to give every game a fair shake, I've divided the list into two categories. Grand strategy games and non-grand strategy games. Now, that may seem a little bit confusing, but over the course of the year, I have played a absolute abundance of grand strategy games, uh, and an abundance of strategy games that are very clearly not grand strategy games, yet have very strategic elements. And it seems very silly to me to put these together into the same category when they differ so widely. At number five, we have Transport Fever. Transport Fever is the hotly anticipated sequel to Train Fever, which is a game that I also thoroughly enjoyed. The game absolutely excels when it comes to providing hyper-realistic models of vehicles of every shape and size. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed this game. Uh, it's a really, really fantastic uh, transport simulation game. However, there are so many flaws that it really just couldn't do any better um, on the list. I mean, the, the base... The base core concept is there, it is enjoyable, it is fun, but there are so many kinks that need to be worked out before this game can be truly, truly, truly great. I really enjoyed it. I absolutely loved seeing Concord take to the skies. Um, it was fantastic how much time and effort and energy had gone into crafting uh, such a loved game. But the mechanics that are in place really leave a lot to be desired. Um, I've talked about them in my videos multiple times before, but there, 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 there is a lot to be done here. There is absolutely a lot to be done here, and uh, it's a real shame that this game couldn't do higher, but I've got big hopes for 2017, and fingers crossed the developers can iron out a bunch of the bugs and a bunch of the mechanics that I think make the game very unfun. At number four, we have Worms WMD. So, this is number four because I really, really enjoyed this game. This game is fantastic. Um, it's my first real Worms game, which which, which sounds unbelievable, um, coming from a guy who really sort of enjoys strategy games and more casual strategy games as well as the more serious strategy games. Uh, Worms was interesting for me. Um, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed playing it. Um, certainly better to play with friends rather than play on your own, because who, who would play Worms on your own? But the, the vast variety of weapons really, really had me interested, and it kept me hooked. It really, really, really kept me hooked. I love, I love the fact that there are uh, such a diverse way that you can, uh, that you can fiddle around and kill the, uh, the opposing worms. So, I really, really like Worms. The reason that it's not higher up on the list is because it's... It's good. It, it did keep me hooked. Yes, I will admit that, but for how long? It didn't keep me hooked for as long as I was really expecting from a title um, of this magnitude. And I, I did feel myself getting bored rather quickly of it, which is a real shame because this is a fantastic game. And uh, I just wish there was a little bit more variety in the way that it was played. But a very, very, very good game and, uh, and a well-deserving fourth place on the list. In third place, we have Democracy 3 Africa. Democracy 3 Africa is the expandalone uh, expansion pack thing to Democracy 3 based, as you can probably tell, in Africa. It adds a whole bunch of specific policies that are pertinent to Africa and uh, adds a vast variety of gameplay that is very grounded in, uh, in a bunch of issues that are currently being experienced in Africa. So, why is this game number three? Well, first of all, because I flippin' loved it. That is exactly why it makes the, the top five. You know, all of the games in the top five are very, very good games, not taking anything away from them. Um, I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed Democracy 3. I really, really, really did. It was so unbelievably interesting to have a fantastic new, fresh look at democracy, um, especially uh, at, at, democracy th at democracy in Africa, because, you know, it's not an area of the world that I'm particularly familiar with, and uh, I think that that goes for a lot of people who uh, who probably enjoyed this game. You know, you just don't exactly know what happens, and I think that this was a this was quite an eye-opening experience. Uh, that being said, it's a it's a great game, but I don't feel that it added enough to really redefine the democracy uh, the democracy three genre, the democracy franchise, so to speak. Um, it's it's a great game with a lot of extra content, but. At, 
at the heart of it, it's still Democracy 3. And Democracy 3 is, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a couple of years old now. So, uh, would perhaps have liked to see a little bit more. The mechanics didn't really change around. There were a few minor tweaks here and there. But at the heart of that game, there is just, you know, Democracy 3, which is a, which is a game that is a couple of years old. And for that reason, I, I couldn't put it any higher up the list. In second place, we have Project High Rise. Project High Rise is a game that revolves around building uh, your very own skyscraper. You need to plan out all of the floors, you need to build all of the utilities that are going to be used by the people living and working inside your building. And, uh, and honestly, overall, I had a great time with this game. I really, 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 really enjoyed it. Uh, released in the latter half of the year, it really took me off surprise, it really took me by surprise at how good it was. Like, it was a really solidly well-built game. And there's something that's just so unbelievably addictive about placing utilities and placing apartment buildings and placing shops and doing all of that stuff it's it's just really unbelievably satisfying and and thoroughly gratifying um when you build something that doesn't look like ass and i never accomplished that uh, my 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 skyscraper always looked like ass but believe me it was a satisfying ass you know it was really really satisfying to build that's for sure um so for that reason it's number 2 the only reason that this game is number 2 by the way is because i enjoyed the uh, the the game at the top of the list a tiny tiny bit more but trust me when i say that the that the, the title only goes to that by a slight margin it was very very close between our uh, our first and second contender and in first place we have tharsis tharsis is a game that pits you against disaster you are put in charge of a spaceship that is slowly being destroyed, and it is your job to save the crew and get them safely to their destination. Or perhaps not save them, and maybe they won't arrive safely at their destination. Who knows? It's up to you. This game was released almost a year ago to the day that this video will come out on, and this is a game that has managed to stick with me for those entire 12 months. And... I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I really, really did. On the outset, this game is unbelievably luck-based and very, very challenging. That is not an argument that I would stop you from making, if you were to make that. However, I think that there is much more to that game than meets the eye. And one of the reasons that I think that this is my number one game of 2016 is because it has it has had that lasting impact on me. I can still I can still remember playing it in January and just having an absolute whale of a time. The mechanics are solid. The dice are gorgeous. I love the systems that they have in place. I love how unbelievably unforgiving it is. And I don't usually like unforgiving games. That game is hard it is very very hard but believe me it is it is a fantastic example of 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 what thinking about how you play a game can come uh, and help you it really really is because i was i was bad at it i was very very bad at tharsis until i sat down and i played it with my good friend rhapsody and we discussed things and we we talked about our actions as we uh, as we played there's a link to the card up in the the top right hand corner of the playlist that we did on this game and it was it was whilst filming uh, this this series that i realized that this is this is a type of game that that really that really rewards that type of slow pace and logical thinking in a way that is not really seen in in other games um and as soon as i'd sort of realized that this game became so much more so much more interesting so much more fascinating and so much more memorable and here we are almost 12 months later it's a great game it really 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 is it's difficult yes but 
if you think about it, if you stop and think, then there is so much, so much enjoyment to be had from such a simple concept of just rolling the die. Now, this isn't a popular opinion. This game is not unbelievably popular. People very, very, very much so uh, disliked it. But there will always be a special place in my heart for this game. As corny and as cheesy as that sounds, this game really, 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 really was a fantastic game for me. And that's why, that's why it's top of the list. That is absolutely why it's top of the list. So after having finished writing this video, and after having decided that Tharsis was my number one game of 2016, at least in the non-grand strategy genre, I reached out to the developers and let them let them know that I had made their decision because I loved the game and I wanted to uh, and I wanted to see if I could get any codes for you guys for this game. So if you haven't got the game and you would like it, then uh, then I will be doing a giveaway of two Tharsis codes provided very 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 kindly by the developers of this game. So if you'd like if you'd like to uh, to enter the giveaway, then follow me on Twitter so that you can see the announcement because I'll make the announcement on Twitter and also comment below the video uh, letting letting me know. So that's it. That is my top 5 non grand strategy games for 2016. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'm super interested to see what you guys have to say. Uh, the grand strategy list of games will be coming very, very, very soon indeed, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, ladies and gents, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.